going on, people? It's your boy, Patrick Michael Strange. I have not quite accurate cosplay in the house. Hi. My boy, Giano, <laughs> Brandy, and uh, we're at Painted Vision Comics Cards Games. Shout out to Adam Martin, who is busy at work today. It's a busy week. He's got a lot of stuff going on, but we love you, Adam. Shout Woo! out to these shoes. <laughs> as well. yeah, those these, shoes. these kicks are just... Kick, kick. Kick. Yeah. Just blue. We're talking about my shoes and uh, making the long drive, but I appreciate him very much. My boy Jesse, he's 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 just he's hardcore bloodshot. He's everything, man. He's he's making it happen at both stores like me. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, <laughs> Surprise, because he drives a very long way. So shout out to Jesse. Yeah, appreciate you, brother. <laughs> so uh, sure. we're here uh, for the NRW of uh, August fifteenth. This week is our new release Wednesday. Uh, going into the week. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, we have a list of things going on. Um, but uh, what's going on with y'all, peoples? Um, what's new before we get into everything else? Anything? Watching anything? Playing anything? I'm still stuck on Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Like, I'm... Gaming on that hard? I'm, like, hardcore gaming on that because I am really, really want the true ending. Okay. Apparently there's multiple endings on this game, and I, I want the true one. You're playing so. it to, to, to learn all of this, yes. the story. I want Gotta every... every uh, yes. And that's kind of that's really a big deal in my games because okay. it has to have if it has multiple endings, I have to get every single ending I possibly can. Mm. Okay, Gianna, what's good with you? Um, well, work, good, work, work. Uh, <laughs> a lot of work. Now that I'm a manager at my job, so yep. that oh, took up a lot congrats. of time. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're letting this, huh? Yeah, it'll be fine. Gaming. Uh, Gaming wise, new? alternating between Persona Five. Fortnite, Orcs Must Die, and Monster Hunter. Okay. Um, watching wise, well, we catch Preacher every week. And, Still good? Uh, oh, yeah, doing right. Okay. It, mm -hmm. Oh, my God. All so Father Weeks did die. We're kind of a little off and on on that show. Is, I haven't watched it in a while. Didn't they finally put Jesus' descendant on? I drop off the show. Yes. yes. Humperdue. Humperdue. Yes. <laughs> that's what the H and Jesus that H took Christ balls. stands for. That took balls, man. Oh, man, that's good. Oh, they, wait till you see this past week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did Air Star get his get his uh, dick bit off yet by a dog? Uh, no, no, but he does have a dick head now because he got he got his. Yes, head they split. got that in He's there. Got the yes, they got the dick. You may have to tune into <laughs> that. I have to now. watch it again. Yes. <laughs> he wears this like crocheted hat that looks like a condom. It's great. <laughs> so, oh my god, now that you just said it, I does I real oh the visual fuck. Came oh, that's great. Yes. oh, that's great. It's amazing. It makes me miss his other hat, yeah. though. Oh, my yeah. God. You know, it's funny, actually, because a co-worker of mine watches it as well. Yeah. And him and his wife have recently stopped watching it mm. because of what happened, like, in the last two episodes. And, and that was how I learned my co-worker's homophobic. Oh. So oh, I was God. like, oh. Because I was like, so you're homophobic? He's, no, no, no. But I don't want to watch that, so we're no longer watching the show. I'm like, well, y'all suck. Uh, okay, then. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Personal opinion, suck. Come well. on. Oh, well. Love that. Damn the show. Damn right. show. Loving right. the show. Okay. We're still catching up on stuff we're behind on, but. Yep. Did you uh, finally get some cloak and dagger in there yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> 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 Am I just getting yeah, I I'm not getting into uh, I watched the finale. That's it. I finale was good. Can't that. wait for season two. That's all I gotta say. Hmm. But she hasn't even seen season, uh, episode one yet, so. No, I'll leave it there. no. Well, it's because. So I am good. dedicated because I've had to finish Arrow. We've had to finish Arrow. Okay. We had to because we're waiting. Flash. Legend tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Still got to finish up on yeah. 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 yeah, we're we're like we're Netflix. Like okay. when it comes to those, we're Netflix strict because we don't exactly have cable. Okay. <laughs> I think that, that's, that's consensus with a lot of people. Is people are just realizing cable's not really worth it. Anymore. No, no. So. but um, ten thousand channels. You're gonna watch about four of them. Yep. <laughs> And probably not at the time they're on. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. I just have to have it. Yeah. Just, I, I just can't imagine. But yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that. and there, there are some there are some ways we get our shows. Not exactly, you know. <laughs> Everybody, you're talking to union guys right here. Don't tell us that. Don't even hear that. <laughs> the internet's a wonderful thing. Yeah, we yeah. record things. All right, we're moving on. Jesse, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, They're killing us over yeah. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> currently, currently watching. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm watching any current shows. I'm plowing my way through Star Trek Enterprise. Okay. I, should, I should say suffering through it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm in. The, I'm finally into season four. They finally got through the Zindi War, and it's like, it, God, it's the Zindi War arc, the the massive. 9-11 allegory from yeah. season three. Nice idea. Not good for a Star Trek show. It's really not good. Season four gets a little bit better, but it's, it's still kind of a 
pass. Okay. So, but uh, playing wise, uh, considering the unite the right thing happened over the weekend, I'm playing yeah, and fizzled. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing the Wolfenstein games and killing Nazis. It's great. <laughs> there you go. I love the part in the in the second game where you go to Roswell, New Mexico, and you see the Nazis and the KKK have taken over the town, and you're carrying a nuclear warhead. The whole time I'm thinking, I'm gonna kill all these fucking people, aren't I? <laughs> and you do. <laughs> it's fucking great. Awesome. Oh man, yeah, those uh, Wolfenstein games are actually really good. I'm shocked. Okay. They're actually really good games. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They're surprisingly good. Yeah, I, I yeah. haven't played in a while, but oh. they, I did remember that recall that they did put put in on the Xbox One, PlayStation. Oh and yeah, this is the newer. The newer, the, the newer ones are, yeah. are are are. They actually gave the main character some real characterization. See, he, he's got a lot of depth now. Although yeah. he does get into complete schlock territory. I'm going to give away something. He gets his head chopped off at one point, and they somebody catches it with a drone, runs it into <laughs> a lab, and plugs it into a jar of of fluid. And keeps it alive until they can find him a clone body. That sounds crazy, but cool. <laughs> it's it's really really goofy at some points. This the, the amount of punishment the main character can take is like, okay, how are you even alive, dude? Yeah. It's like yeah, but just just go it's with it. Video game. Exactly. Is it FPS? Is it still the oh, card, still the, the nod to the original that I'll it's never still, forget as a yeah. And there's even computer little, gamer. There's man. even Easter eggs where you can actually play the original Wolfenstein. Yeah, and that's money, man. I love that. It's classic, and I love to see that it's taken on still a new generation. Yeah. Cannot wait for the next yeah. one where it's actually the main character's two twin daughters that take over fighting the Nazis. And, wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Would you like to see a Wolfenstein movie? You know, I, I was actually thinking this. When would I was, when I was I think that would be cool. Sounds funny. Well, this is going to lead into one of our discussions. When I was working on Wonder Woman 2, I worked on it for four days. I got to see Chris Pine on set. He's a nice guy. What um, film? What are you working on? One Woman Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did four days yeah, yeah. of work on that. Yeah, made two grand in four days. Oh, great. Shit. Yeah, all of it went to bills, but I made actually, no, in, I made no income. For the fa- for for our viewers, I actually snuck over there while you guys were filming, and um, here real quick, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. Here's some of the uh, old cars that they use on the set that I kind of got some footage that I wasn't supposed to, mm. and then here right now that you see on the screen is the facade. Uh, that they put on the outside of Landmark Mall oh, to yeah. the supposed mall that uh, they'll be at in the film. So there it is on the screen. Yeah. Sneak peek. Anyway, all right. Mm-hmm. Real quick, and before <laughs> uh, DC sues me. Hey, there you go. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, um, well, you want to get on us for what we do. Yeah, hey! Yeah. Hey! Uh, uh, we're not going to get into that. We're not talking. Anyways, I was on set and I saw Chris Pine, and yeah. I was thinking to myself, oh, you look a lot like BJ Blazkowicz. From Wolfenstein, oh, you really do. So he, you would cast him? I would cast him. Okay. If there was a Wolfenstein, they've been trying to make a Wolfenstein movie for years now, and originally it was going to be Roger Avery that was going to direct it, the guy that co-wrote Pulp Fiction, okay. and then he killed somebody with his car. Yeah, mm. that'll, yeah, that'll that'll that kind of yeah I think deal. he's still in prison. I, I, I actually feel. Oh, that, by the way, Marianne, and this is her. So this is why um, Brandy is holding the head. Yes. Marianne is back, y'all. What's up, Marianne? <laughs> the voice behind it all. Um, I, I actually think that for something like that, I think that would actually be something I'd love to see Quentin Tarantino take a crack at. We already did. It's called Inglorious Bastards. Yep. <laughs> well, but I want to see him do the Wolfenstein. You actually oh, led yeah. me into what I was going to bring up after Jesse. Yeah. So speaking of going back to Star Trek, yes. I read this in a magazine the other day, Geek Magazine uh, mm-hmm. from Walmart. They have like a nerd magazine that they put out. Yeah. Apparently he's getting the reins of Star Trek. I didn't know this. Did y'all know this? Quentin Tarantino is, is, is going to be getting... directing the next Star Trek movie. Yep. What the what? Are, we, are you all as blown as I was when I found that out? I'm going to say this. How do you feel about that? I, I'm going to say this. I am officially tired of Tarantino. <laughs> oh. But it's Star Trek. So and I'm he's a super a, fan. And he's a super fan. I just hope he doesn't use the N-word in the Star that Trek universe. Please Whoa. don't do that. No, he'll create some new one. Oh, well, there you go. That, I, I, I swear, I'm I'm so tired so of seeing it. I'm like so sick of it. I mean, it's he, it's he doesn't just. I mean, it's he, not he cool. He just throw some point. curses up and like what? Hang on, shit like that. Uh, <laughs> Are there any swear words in Star Trek? I can't think of any. Look, Supposedly, we should be is. better than that I, now. I, I actually found an entire list of supposed Klingon uh, swear words. I know one of them means your mother has a flat forehead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but. The only one I remember good. is uh, that's pretty good. Is a uh, uh, <laughs> patak, which means stupid. So okay, I don't know if it's canon, but that there is Klingon swear words. Interesting. Yeah. What is and isn't canon? And seemingly, your mother has a flat, flat forehead. forehead. Yeah. I like that one. I might actually yeah. use that and confuse the <laughs> shit out of people. Yeah. But in terms of Tarantino, it's like 
if you really think about it, that's the one genre he has not tackled yet. He's done every other genre of film except for science fiction. Yeah, that's every true. other genre except science fiction. So I'm I'm kind of interested. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like. You know, now we've heard that Chris Pine is now not involved anymore. So that, so here's that I'll, leads into that. Yeah. So I was confused. So I read that, but then I saw the news that Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth they're having contract negotiations, contract issues for the next Star Trek. Yeah. So is this in reference to the the Tarantino Star Trek? Were they gonna, or is this with were they doing one other Star Trek before the Tarantino Star well, Trek? The problem is that Beyond didn't do very well, which is a shame because it's actually the best one of the three, <laughs> which is the, that's the most disappointing part. And the other thing is that Star Trek Discovery, while it's doing well as a show, to me is not really a Star Trek show in my opinion, because it's, it's just all war all the time, and it's not really Star Trek. So I just feel like they're trying to... But we are to, getting Picard back. We are getting Picard back. I'm happy with that. But at the same time, it's like they're trying to shove it into this mold where it, it's like mm -hmm. putting a square peg in a round hole where it doesn't quite fit, mm -hmm. and they just don't know what to do with it. They, try to, they want to make it for a big, wide audience like Star Wars, Star Trek isn't designed for that. No, it's, it's more... It's, it's, it's introspective, it's yeah. political, it's not... Star Wars is very broad. It's like broad mm -hmm. themes, broad concepts. Star Trek is very precise for what it's trying to do. Um, and I think that, you know, that kind of conflicts with Tarantino, which he does very broad ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if they try and mess with that too much, they're going to piss off a lot of their, like, hardcore fan base. Just look at the reaction to Into Darkness. It was a huge backlash. Huge. Oh, I just thought of something. Uh, I saw that they casted a new Spock, but it's for the Discovery. It's for the Discovery show because it takes yeah. place. It's supposed to take place in the original timeline, but that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's such bullshit because the visuals of the ships themselves are designed from the J.J. Abrams show. And oh, this is boggling my mind because it, the but Picard is also going to be showing up. So how the timelines? Yeah, uh, the space? original plan. What is going on here? The original plan was that. Each season was going to be its own self-contained narrative. Like, okay, this part takes place before Enterprise. Okay? Uh -huh. Season two, flash forward 100 years later. What happened after Deep Space Nine? It's like, it's going to be different points in different times, and then the original creator dropped out of the show, and they probably just threw that out of the window. Oh, that sounds like some Doctor Who wibbly wobbly tiny whiny shit. Uh, yeah. Apparently. Well, it's going to be like so it's different be stories from different perspectives. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the problem is, then, then CBS got involved and said, we don't want to do that. Then... I think it was Brian Fuller was the original mm -hmm. uh, guy that was behind the show. He dropped out before the show came. Okay. So. so to wrap up, for most people who aren't too familiar with Star Trek, I have an idea for you. Here's this, one of my favorite musicians, a guy named Aurelio Voltaire. He has this album called Bitrectual. It's, a, <laughs> it's about different Star Wars to Star Trek songs. He has a song in there called The USS Make Shit Up. Oh, Listen yes. to that, and you'll understand everything about so. Star Trek you ever need to know. Yes. Okay. And yes, we are all bitrectual. Yes, we are. Mm. But I will say I am very sad if Chris and if my Chris's I love I love the Chris's. Yeah. It's the only missing yeah. Chris Evans at that point. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll be sad if they're no not Brad. there. He's very. Oh sad. yeah, Brad. Yeah, almost, we got Chris. Brad. Damn man. Yeah, we're big. Why is everybody? Chris's. Why is everybody named Chris in Hollywood? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so uh, is that all the, the news <laughs> that, that's best to put out uh, yeah, for this it's week? It really is. It's kind of a slow releases. week. It's it is true. true. Yeah, it's kind of a slow week. All right, let's get into it. Coming out on Blu-ray DVD, I'm going to save the best for last. Yeah, let's save uh, that. You're not going to save, save that. this one right here. Can't see that. Both is off camera. Uh, <laughs> I know you guys will be interested in this as Neil Gaiman fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how to talk to girls at parties. Uh, in the 70s, punk-loving teen... Uh, N, played by Alex Sharp, attempts to crash a party in the London suburbs. He ends up at the wrong house where he encounters a kooky conformist cult, which includes the naive Zan, played by Elle Fanning. They hit it off before N learns that she is actually a repressed humanoid alien on Earth to complete a fatal ritual. N appeals to the punk scene to help both emotionally and physically liberate the ladies he's fallen for. It's directed by John Cameron Mitchell, and it's based on the short story of the same name by Neil Gaiman. Hmm. Uh, Neil Nicole Kidman also co-stars. <clears throat> Interested? Yes. Yeah, check that out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Neil so Gaiman. Just so we did that. Like, Neil yes. Gaiman they, everything. Yes, I like. I currently <laughs> very I still, interesting concept. I'm yeah. still currently reading Anansi Boys. Anansi's Boys. Uh -huh. And it's, oh, I love the story writing. Okay. Oh, that's right. Good Omens is in production right now. We forgot to mention it that. Is so, yeah. interesting mm -hmm. film. Go check that out. That is out on Blu-ray DVD. 
Uh, oh, wow, we actually did a uh, trailer reaction to this film, and uh, our boy Mac, uh, when we filmed at the other shop, is actually one of the supporters on this, actually one of the financiers uh, with the, the group that puts this together. Bad Samaritan, uh, with uh, the Doctor Who guy. Uh, David Tennant? Yeah, David Tennant. Yes. Two valet attendants, uh, Robert Sheehan and Carlito Olivero, who robbed the homes of their clients, find a hostage chained inside the home of evil and wealthy Kale, played by David Tennant. Mm -hmm. After reporting what they saw to the authorities, they become his prey as he terrorizes them while evading the police. Carrie Condon and Jacqueline Byers also co-star and it's directed by Dean Devlin. This Ooh. is that the... That's the was guy. Was he one of those he, big explosion he, guys he, too? He directed uh, Geostorm. Water, was he in Waterworld too? No, 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 that was me else. He directed Geostorm, he, he produced uh, the... 1998 Godzilla movie, as well as Independence Day, is rolling. Oh, okay. rolling Emmerich's right hand man for a long time. Yes, then that's they, right. Then they've since broken their. Problems. But he does like those big film types. Big grand. If you see the trailer stuff. to this, it's a, it's a. He does a good job with horror. It's a horror yeah, it's, film. It's, it's it's an interesting premise. So. It's it's interesting. I'm excited because this would be like the third big role Tenet has been in a as a villain. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Tenet fans. Oh, I am. Oh yeah. I am. Okay. Um, when, he's, he, he's when, he was the, when he was the purple man in Jessica Jones, oh yeah, I purple freaked. man. This. What was the other one? Uh, he was Barty Crow, uh, Harry Potter. Okay. Oh yeah. He was the one I who. Was, he's even in those movies. Yeah. Well, then he, again, I only he, saw the first one. Well, he was. In the, he was. Uh, he saw was like two. morphed as to the Mad Eye Moody guy. So it was this whole really uh, weird, yeah. fucked up thing, and but he still played a deranged psycho brilliantly in that. Okay. Not a Harry Potter guy. Like <laughs> Although I have been told I'm a Slytherin. I don't know what that means. Yeah. yeah. I've always wondered too what I am. I, I'm not a big Harry Potter guy. Just but go on Pottermore. What would you say I am? You? My Slytherin? Mm, no. No. Hufflepuff. You're... I know a lot of people uh, are Hufflepuff. I don't know, <laughs> well, I don't know I, what that means. I'm a Puff. I'm a Puff. I'm a Hufflepuff. But, um, and I know he's a Slytherin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're either a Puff or a Ravenclaw. Okay. No, 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 not Ravenclaw. I, I need not to Raven know what Claw. set I'm representing. Not, not Ravenclaw. Griff, you're either a Puff or a Gryffindor. Okay. You're one of those two, not Ravenclaw. I'll look into that. <laughs> well, you can always Pottermore, you go on Pottermore and take the test. Let us know in the comments what do you think each of us are. And also, what even uh, any of that means, because I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. God, I got it. I'm Harry the Potter only Potterhead. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> only Potterhead up here. I read the first My people... I read the first three books when I was out of school for a while, and then I realized, wow, I'm starting to notice a pattern here, and that kind of stopped. <laughs> they, they actually, surprisingly, just to throw this out there, because, you know, I'm going to just do a little Harry Potter advertising, there is actually an online Hogwarts school you can go to. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? Well, yeah, well, why wouldn't there be? <laughs> and yeah. so I actually tried to uh, attend for a little while, but life got too hectic, and I couldn't keep up with my assignments. So I oh got booted. Oh, <laughs> Super nerds right here, people. We are super nerds. All right, next out uh, on Blu-ray DVD. Still love you. I know you do. <laughs> I'm too cute not to love. Higher Power. Uh, in this action-adventure thriller, Joseph Steedman, played by Ron Eldard, finds himself at the mercy of the universe's every whim. The fate of the world rests in Joseph's hands when a mad scientist throws him into a do-or-die battle. The battle puts everything at risk, including his and his family's existence. Stars uh, Jay Taylor, Jordan Henson, Austin Stoll, Confior, Mea Malcolm, um, Laura Margolis, and directed by Matthew Santora. Uh, I wanted to shout out Jay Taylor. Uh, she was on the show. Uh, we interviewed her at Wakama Con. Uh, she's uh, from uh, either Magicians or I forgot the other. I think it's Magicians. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah she's on Magicians. We we had on the show. Shout out to Alicia who interviewed her for the channel. So. Um, interesting, but something sounds, sounds we've like seen every, before. Every, every cliche I've heard in every single sci-fi. Higher movie. power. I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's going to be one of them super religious films or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is Chris Kirk so, uh, Cameron involved in somehow? That is out. Uh, the biggest film, before I get into some of the other... Actually, you know, I'll wrap it up. I'll, leave, I'll save the best for last. Of course. I, you of know, course. Uh, we'll always do that. Uh, out on DVD, uh, if you're TV fans, Arrow, the sixth season is out. Uh, Blacklist, the fifth season. Muppet Babies, time to play. I did not know that they brought back Muppet Babies. It's been out for a while. So, Muppet yeah, it's been out yeah. for a while now, man. I'm psyched. I really it's love it's Muppet like, Babies. It's like DuckTales came back. Like Everything from your childhood is coming back. Because they have no new ideas. Because they have and, no new and ideas. And they're milking True. the nostalgia. Milking okay. the nostalgia, because we know that all people that are our age are going to pay out the ass for it. 
I'm gonna pick this soggy up. with nostalgia. Madison, we're gonna watch this together. It is kind of funny hey. that it is kind of funny that uh, Don Cheadle on um, uh, is now the voice of uh, Donald Duck on. Podcast. Oh, they That's replaced hilarious. him. They gave him. Was like, it a tenant? They gave him like a voice box or something like that on like uh, or something like that. And now I think it's like Don Cheadle is the voice of uh, Donald Duck. Interesting. But why they replace it? I thought. Oh no, Donald Duck. No. Yeah, Donald Duck. Not not Scrooge. Not, not Scrooge, 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 Scrooge is Scrooge tenet. David Tennant. Yeah, okay. Donald Duck is like, Cheadle. Tenet's going everywhere. Yeah. Now oh. they get, they like hit him or something like they give him like a voice box and now he sounds like Don Cheadle. Oh, interesting. It's interesting. Now, it's it's weird. bring back SWAT Cats Radical Squadron. Then that's oh, my nostalgia. God, SWAT cats. I love that show. All right, I don't have it on my list, but I'll let you know when it does. Uh, so Muppet Babies, time to play. NCIS New Orleans, the fourth season. Power Rangers, Ninja Steel, the complete season. SEAL Team Season 1 and WW Extreme Rules 2018. And for you anime and animated heads, we have Assassination Classroom Season 1, Classroom of the Elite, the complete series. Ergo Proxy, the complete series. I'm throwing it all up on the screen so you can see right mm. now. Outlaw <laughs> Star, the complete series. Planetarian, Ovas, and Movie. Seven Deadly Scenes, Sins, Season mm. 1. And Steven Universe, Heart of the Crystal Gems is out for all you anime and animated heads. There you go. I forgot one. What's that? I missed that. Oh, that's the big finale. Okay. So that was my part before I let them do their thing. But the no. biggest film you're going to pick up, and I already had a cop mine on my way here. <laughs> Everyone's going to get this. Yeah. <laughs> Avengers mm. Infinity War. It was already out on digital copy earlier, but I have to have it in my gritty hands. I have to have physical is. copies as yeah. well. I uh, picked up the 4K. Looks like it's got uh, tons of extras in there, too. Tons of extras. we got a gag reel. We have Strange Alchemy, the Mad Titan, the Beyond the Battle of Wakanda. It's a cool stuff, man. I always love the um, commentary tracks. I love those. I highly recommend, uh, for those that <laughs> actually want more content, um, I used to be a big collector. We were Jesse and I were just talking about this earlier. Uh, I used to be a big collector, and there's this whole thing about steel books. Yeah, fans, people go rabbit over the steel books, but to me, that's not content. It's just a fucking case. Yeah, it's yeah. A who case, cares about the case? case? I want additional shit. Yeah. yeah. So the like, artwork that's on the case, I'd rather have it as artwork on my wall. Hello, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give us the extra stuff, the behind the scenes. What yeah. went into this? So you when they have like bonus DVDs or like with this that I got at Target, uh, it has an additional. Uh, 40 page filmmaker gallery book. So as images, as a, you know, some, uh, some words from the guy, just it's more content that yeah. I want to consume than just a case. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So uh, I skipped my to pick yours yeah. up. So that's best, out. I think the best company that's putting out like professional Blu-rays and stuff is Screen Factory. They put out uh, special edition versions of like all of John Carpenter's movies, like uh, The Thing and Escape from New York. And like the the uh, the, co the one that's uh, Big Trouble in Little China, the commentary track, is one of my favorite commentaries, where it's Kurt Russell and John Carpenter. They barely talk about the movie. Mostly they're just talking about Kurt Russell's kids visiting the city. Right. They're just, they're just hanging out and having a good time. It's Do you crazy. guys, so am I, I thought I was like the only, so you listen to auto commentary oh, yeah. tracks? I like yeah. that too. It gives you a different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'm not alone. No. <laughs> You're amongst family. All exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's, what out, that's what's out on Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy. And my man Giano uh, is going to break down gaming. Okay. What do we got? All right. So let's see. We're starting off with the Jack, uh, the Jackbox Party Pack, Nintendo Switch. Entertainment to 100 friends with this Jackbox Digital Party Pack. Five comedy trivia games provide a full night of laughs. And flexible design connects with phones, tablets, and computers as controllers to keep everyone involved. This Jackbox Digital Party Pack runs on the Nintendo Switch to ensure great performance. So it's, it, 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 it's comedy trivia games. It's from a, thing, a series I remember called You Don't Know Jack. I, ju I was oh, just thinking that. that. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking You Don't Know Jack. And I don't know nothing about Jack. What the fuck is that about? Do you know about that series? Yeah, it's, just, it's, like, it's like a game show. It's like a game show where it's just like you're just asked questions. Oh, okay. Oh, you, okay, just, so you get questions you yeah, plug but in the, your But answers. the announcer will always uh, uh, goad you and irritate you and make fun of you if you fail a question. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of like those old Monty Python games yeah. that, that were like that. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it might not be get the jack box or else you jack shit I don't yeah. know I just thought of that you're good that was lame dad hey, joke hey, it's okay. dude, dude, you got <laughs> it's it okay. uh, so for those who um, are more of the who prefer tabletop certain tabletop RPGs hey. uh, Warhammer 40k Death Watch on Playstation 4 that series will never die uh, no never ever die. <laughs> ever uh, ever it's a, it's a turn based uh, strategy game puts you in control of a team of space marines as you fight evil aliens across a variety of locations I'm going to be real with you. If you don't know Warhammer 40K, you're probably not going to understand most of it. You might still have some fun, but you just might not get most of it. You killed me at turn-based. 
She's very anti turn based in any game, Aww. but that's just like my shit growing up because yeah. I was a big RPG player. So XCOM is my jam. That's just me. Though. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. See, next up, Space Hulk. Not what you're thinking. Plays a small squad of fearless Space Marine Terminators who attempt to reclaim their honor by mounting an assault on the derelict Space Hulk infested by hordes of vicious uh, tyrant, uh, Tyranid gene stealers. So stealing genes. Yeah. They, they specifically called it, called it Space Hulk just for the name. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course, why not? Because yeah. everyone's going to have this. This isn't a Marvel game. Listen no, this. no, no it's, it's false advertising. What? And so that's tied to the Warhammer, I think, too? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> At least not according to this. It's not telling me this. But, I mean, if it's got Space Marines in it, I'm going to assume that it is. Yeah. But then the next one, which is Space Hulk Ascension, based on the classic board game, um, the, the basically, yeah, it's the, pretty much the same thing. So, yeah, I think all, exactly all, all of that is Warhammer. So, if I just confused you with any of that, it's probably awesome. not for you. Yeah, they're blitzing you with Warhammer this week, people. So we, the Warhammer fans should be super happy this week. Hopefully, although they yeah. probably still would not give up their pewter figurines. And I don't blame them. <laughs> they put so much time into painting them. Why would they? Exactly. Roll initiative. So, next up, we got the Sims 4 Laundry Day <laughs> stuff. I can't make that up. That's the name Laundry Day ah, stuff. So, a Sims update. Yeah, Wait, so more Sims. More the, Sims. What? You get to do laundry now? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for that. Give your Sims more to do every day with the Sims 4 laundry stuff. Has the time... Isn't it like in the original Sims game, wasn't it like one second equals like five minutes in the game world or something like that? Yep. There was never enough time in the day to even do normal things. Yep, and now you get to... It is specifically talking about doing laundry. That takes all day in general. Yeah. Country, country-inspired clothing lets you customize each Sims look. While a rustic country home with coordinating furniture gives them a cozy place to stay away from the city with a variety of laundry tasks. Okay, let's be honest here. Most people play The Sims to avoid doing laundry. <laughs> so they're yeah. going to be playing The Sims and doing laundry so do, while looking at their baskets and going, How meta is that? that? Oh, man. It's that's, like, just, that's just kind of sad and depressing when you really think about it. It's it really like you're is. letting your whole life go to waste so you can focus on this fictional life that doesn't actually exist. Yes, and you're doing laundry again. <laughs> it's wow. Just, Wow. At least there you can kill people and get away with it. Yeah. So you can box them in and then you can have them scream at you until they eventually turn into a little urn. Exactly. Like, one of my favorite things was actually uh, Sims. People, you know, always post up about the, the most tragic Sim things ever happened. Uh-huh. Yeah. So someone died, the Grim Reaper came, and then a woman who was there pregnant was giving birth. And the Grim Reaper was freaking out, going, like, This isn't my job! This is the exact opposite <laughs> of my job! <laughs> That's about my Sims extent uh, right there. That's pretty good. I, bet, I thought you were going to say, like, oh, and then he took the baby. And I was like, I, I, mean, I, <laughs> I can only hope. I can only hope. Wow. Uh, that so, would... Oh, man, that would be really, up, uh, really dark. What else you got, brother? XCOM 2 Collection. Yes! Hey! Told you it was coming. Just wait for it. So XCOM 2 Collection includes the award-winning strategy game XCOM 2, the War of the Chosen expansion, and four DLC packs uh, for a bundle discount. Uh, I know XCOM 2, uh, I think um, two months ago, was actually one of the PlayStation Plus games for free. That's how I got it. Not a bad game. Better mm. than the first one. Mm. Like, I could, couldn't stand the first one. I tried. Really? Just, yeah, I just couldn't do it's it. It's basically the same game. It's just it's, some slight upgrade. It feels different. I don't know why. It just does. It feels the same to me. I don't know. But I was never big on the XCOM series anyway. So. Well, it's an acquired taste. It very much so. Speak for him. Yep. What is it? So what is it? Is it like an alien? Aliens are invading. The covers look, yeah. Look aliens like are invading, alien. and you're a part of a special forces team, but you basically build your team, and you build the base. Okay. So it's like base management mixed with turn-based combat, and it's kind of like a and d kind of thing, where it's like, it, depending upon where you're standing, what cover you're in front of, mm-hmm. what, what ammunition you have, okay. it will affect how much damage you do, how much damage you take. Like, you can be in half cover, full cover, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was watching you play that. It didn't like me. Yep. It doesn't do turn-based. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I tried it on a couple games in years ago, and I was just like, I'm dying because I can't just smash a button and <laughs> kill the fuck out of you. You're a Dynasty <laughs> Warriors person. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, well, that, 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 yeah. So, that, yeah, the Dynasty that was, Warriors. That was, that was my... That was my Actually, Kingdom Hearts was a... I won't say it was my entrance into the gaming world, because that was in uh, Mario Kart in 64. Mm. But it was definitely a lead-in to me being a bigger gamer than what I was. Okay. Ironically, not a Kingdom Hearts fan. And that's okay. okay. Jinx Yomei said Because I'm not a Disney person. <laughs> it's just my thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, John, what All else right. we got? The exciting world of tennis. Tennis? Yes, Tennis World Tour for Nintendo Switch. Why? Because People why like not? I guess. 
So yeah, take to should I, okay. Yeah. Take to the court in Tennis World Tour for Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Choose from thirty playable aces, including Roger Federer, and play on clay, grass, or a host of unique surfaces. I hope one of them's lava. <laughs> the game uses motion capture technology to create realistic movements to help perfect your skills. Okay, first off, it's a bad idea because most people can't hold under their phones enough. They're gonna throw and break shit. <laughs> so, wait, actually, no, that might be a good idea. Yes, keep this up. Break your yes. phones. We need less people on the internet. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Okay. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, mm. <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Yeah. Right. That's a whole debate. As long yes. as I can play with Serena, then I'll try that game. There you go. <laughs> All right. Wait, which way? A. Hey. Hey. Added it up. Uh, so this one is, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be one word or if it's just four letters, but it's uh, yeah. Voez or V-O-E-Z. Nintendo Switch as well. Master the art of creating music in uh, Voez for Nintendo Switch. The digital game features three difficulty levels, so you can build your way up from novice to maestro. More than 50 songs and three patterns provide a host of playing options, and story episodes accompany the music challenges for a unique way to play. So it's like... You make the music as you play it? I guess, but I think it's probably going to be set things like you, you learn how to make those songs specifically. You have to do oh, so it's kind of like a Guitar Hero or oh, more okay. Okay. Oh, it sounds okay. like. Interesting. Or like an amplitude or frequency. Yeah, it wouldn't be something good like, you know... Funk Master Flex Digital Hits Factory, where you actually make music. Yeah. <laughs> there was a game that came out for the PlayStation years and years ago called MTV Music Generator. Mm. Back when MTV was making that's music, what that sounds like. Yes, yeah. back when MTV was still actually you know about music. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Instead of reality. Instead of rea well, reality. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they put out a bunch of games that were MTV Music Generator, where you can actually make music, hmm? and they had these presets. It was like yeah, hundreds that's of what, presets. That's it was what like, the that's, Digital Hits Factory is yeah, actually. That's, and I've actually made a couple beats on there that are yes. I, I personally. Huh. Which we still need to find a way to get your beats all fair and USB on. USB port. Gotta try it. Yeah. Uh, but either way, but yeah, this does not sound like that. This just sounds like something like a, just a different variation. A rhythm like game. Guitar heroes right. or something like that. Yeah. Cool. Just, all right. So I guess we got some gaming news though. What's that? Uh, Super Smash Brothers um, or Bros, I guess now because it's no longer Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Bros. Bros. Anyway, so come at me, bro. Uh, ultimate new characters, stages, more in Smash Ultimate. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna scan this. Ton of, ton not of new characters. This entire thing. Yeah. So I'm trying to see. Let's see what we got Snake here. Snake uh, Castle. Yep. So you got Simon Belmont is gonna be in there. It looks like and uh, solid snake back in there again. Descended Richter. Dark Samus from uh, Metroid. Yep. Samus. So we got Dracula's Samus. Castle is gonna yes. be in there. Um, <clears throat> Crom from the Fire Emblem series. Dark Samus from Metroid. Um, Final Destination is coming back. Uh, new Donk City Hall. And then some classics are coming back as well. Um, Donkey, uh, the, uh, hang on, I'm reading this. Uh, King K. Rule from Donkey Kong is going to be a playable character. Sweet. Ooh. Hmm. So, um, you know who's not? Who? Waluigi. Is yeah, Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a pool. Okay, so this one I don't really need um, the paper for, but uh, Tekken Seven's coming out. Yes. And they recently released uh, three char uh, three characters are going to be coming with it. Um, Fatal Fury's uh, Geese Howard, Noctis from Final Fantasy XV, and Negan from The Walking Dead. Because, the you know, instead of putting him in Soul Calibur, where you can wield a weapon properly, oh my else, gosh, yeah. they're going to put him in Tekken yeah. Seven. Well, hey, it's Negan. Hey. I guess. It's the oddest choice to put a character in there. It's but like, it's cool. I love the They put Link in Soul Calibur. Do y'all not enjoy so, that, well, like the sidebars in our fighting games, though? It's kind of fun. I mean, I've played Tekken with my friends. Like I, I, back, the, I think the last one I played was Tekken 2 or 3, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm behind by a lot back when it was actually still in arcades. I think they think that all of those games are kind of sort of the same thing. They really are. It's kind of just like a couple updates, and it's kind of like, yeah, they're all kind of the same thing. And we'll throw in this new character here and there. Yeah. Yeah, so now you get Negan in Tekken. It's not a down, it's an up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's just, it, it's like, I, I don't know much about Geese Howard because I, I only played a little bit of Fatal Fury. Um, that was the one with Terry Bogart, right? Yes. Making sure. Yes. Okay, so yes, I only played a little bit of Fatal Fury back, back when I was like knee high to a grasshopper. But adding in Noctis, who wields a giant <laughs> fucking sword, and Negan, who's wearing a barbed wire battle, everybody else is just, oh, I'm just going to punch and kick you. Why have you not seen Tekken Calibre? recently? No, I have not. Oh, they've incorporated weapons in the movie. Oh, okay. that's why. That's, that's, see, I'm... Well, there you go. <laughs> you start off with a game with a giant that's, robot that's named Jack. That's how behind we are. <laughs> so I miss the days of beating people up as a kangaroo, okay? Hey. Unfortunately, Joey's not wrong anymore. 
So oh. that is out in gaming. Thank you, Giano. What do we have if we don't want to be at home playing these games and watching these movies? What do we have in theaters? Oh, Jesse, well, we got Fresco. a couple of things. Uh, Mile 22, uh, an elite American intelligence officer aided by a top secret tactical command unit. Uh, tries to smuggle a mysterious police officer with sensitive information out of the country. It's directed by Peter Berg, stars Laura Cohen, who is uh, Walking, Walking Dead, Walking yeah. Dead, Mark Wahlberg, Ronda Rousey. What the fuck? Rousey. <laughs> Rousey. Hey, she's in the WWE now, okay. so she's gonna be everywhere. Peter Berg's yeah. in there as well. Oh, all right, he, he acts as well. That's right. Yeah. 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 But Peter Berg's got a solid resume. Oh yeah. Well, Battleship. Remember that? Remember that uh, masterpiece? The director, though, you know. Well, anyway. he did the rundown. I like the. I, I gave uh, up on the rundown yeah, when the one with Jimmy Rock Didn't he somebody No, that was somebody else. Never that mind. was somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Peter Berg is pretty good. Same. He's fine. That's what He's I gave fine. up on that movie. Yeah. Stop watching. Yeah. yeah. So, Mile 22. Yeah. So, next up, uh, you saw this No, let's skip that one. Let's oh, save the okay. best for last. Next one, Alpha. <laughs> I know nothing about this one. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha, uh, an epic adventure set in the last Ice Age. Alpha tells a a fascinating, visually stunning story that shines a light on the origins of man's best friend. Oh, this is not the story of the um, origin of uh, the, the, dog. the dogs. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much it's basically uh, yeah. young caveman is separated from his tribe, wolf is separated from pack. Oh, that's right. I never saw a trailer for this. Yeah, yeah their they're yeah. trailers have been popping up all yeah. over the TV. I'm work. curious how well it's going to do. I think we can all say loosely based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> based on a theory. We don't really based know on a this theory. to be... <laughs> but yeah. I mean, it's 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 kind of one of those cute feel good films. Yeah, yeah. it reminds me. Of, it looks a little bit like Felix. um, what was that Ang Lee movie, the one with the tiger in the boat? Uh, oh, my papai. My papai. Kind of, yeah. it, it just the premise sounds a lot like that. Yeah, it has to get along kinda, with the animal. Kinda, yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it, it, they come to a mutual understanding that yeah. hey, I can help you, you can help me, we can survive this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's also Jack London novels that do the same thing, but that's just me. Okay, the, no, I'm the only person that's read Jack London. Yeah. Really <laughs> okay, so anyways, last one. You saw this recently. Yes, Crazy the movie that's going to destroy all these other movies this weekend. Crazy Rich Asians. Yes. This contemporary romantic comedy based on the global bestseller follows native New Yorker Rachel Chu to Singapore to meet her boyfriend's family. Kansas Wu, I love you. It's directed by John Chu. That sounds familiar. Step up to the streets. That's right. G.I. Joe Retaliation. Oh, wow. Jim and the Holograms. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping it, Patrick. I know. John, <laughs> just the, the I will say. I was great. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, well, John is a movie is, is, John is, is a good dude. Step up to the streets. He was failed by the scripts. <laughs> he was failed by the scripts, people. He's not failed here. He was failed by the scripts on those other films. That's I'll fine. That. I just like watching the oh. light. Leave <laughs> <laughs> so, Patrick, what I hear is this movie succeeded despite him. Yes. No. No. John Chu is, is awesome as a director. I the films were bad. They, they were written bad. That were this. This is actually a, a good written story. Um, because yeah, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of Retaliation Gym. I was part of the Step Up to the Street, so um, I was an actor in that. I was one of the dancers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, work. <laughs> I might have worked. Did you work on Step Up? No, I didn't. Okay. I know guys that did, but, but I didn't work. He worked on the Step Up movies, and those. If you're a dancer like me as well, and but yeah, but Jim and uh, uh, oh, GI Joe. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan of those. Although I know some people were fans of the GI Joe stuff, and but Jim, I was disappointed because I'm a huge Jim fan. I think y'all remember when we filmed and talked about it on the show. You, you uh, but John. Was it one he's, day in the he's killing it on this one. Yes, John Chu. <laughs> All right. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I was just gonna say that it stars uh, Constance Wu. I knew that was gonna take the wind out your sails. Yeah. Stars <laughs> <laughs> so Constance Wu, Henry Golding, Michelle Yeoh, who is on Star Trek Disco uh, yes. Discovery. Empress Yao. One of the few per one of the few good points of Star Trek Discovery, and then she got killed off. Yeah. Spoiler. Well, uh, <laughs> that was in the beginning of season one. <laughs> it's, it's but not yo, really a spoiler. So I'll add some more to it. And uh, Gemma Chan, yes. is also the other actors. Uh, Constance Wu, who you know from Fresh Off the Boat, uh, one of my favorite shows on television. As a, is probably the only Asian. Well, it is really the other than Kim's Convenience that's now on Netflix. The only real Asian American family show uh, cast that's on TV. Yeah. Great show if you haven't seen it. I love it. Uh, she plays the 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 lead in there with Rachel. Falls in love with this guy, Henry Golding. They go visit their parents in Asia. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, Gemma Chan plays Astrid, who's like this, uh, the woman every woman wants to be. Amazing. It's just a really good immigrant 
story of when you come over here and then you go back and being accepted. It's, it's a lovely romantic comedy. It's beautifully shot and was written uh, by John, Kevin Kwan, who the books were based on. Uh, John Chu did a great job directing, so this script didn't fail him. Okay. I see Adam over there looking at me. Um, uh, it's just a really great film. Oh, Aquafina, who uh, is a rapper. Uh, uh, she was in the name? Ocean's 8 film with Sandra Bullock that recently came out, uh, also with Rihanna. This film, it will be her breakthrough as an actor. Uh, stole, seals, seals every scene that she's in. Uh, I was laughing my ass off. And if you're into her, because I know she's going to go see it with Marianne behind this, the camera, go on YouTube. Uh, Aquafina has this song. Her first rap song was called My Vag, all about the power of her vagina. Because it was based on another, like, because dudes, we always talk about our dicks and shit. So she was like, yeah. well, I'm going to do it from the female perspective. You know, so she has this track called My Vag, which is hilarious. And uh, Green Tea with, uh, she has another track called Green Tea with uh, that other Asian comedian, Margaret Cho. Uh, oh. <laughs> hilarious. She's she's uh, NYC Bitches. That's a great track, too. Hilarious rapper, but she's she, uh, a hilarious rapper. And now going to be a breakthrough actor with this uh, role in there. Uh, just an amazing cast, man. And just uh, as an Asian American, I'm proud to see that. And hopefully uh, we'll get more of this because representation matters. And this is like the first in 25 years since Joy Luck Club that we had a big budget uh, feature film uh, with an Asian American cast. So I'm just mm. very proud of it. So, yeah. I'm adding that to my list to watch. Check it out. Yes. Check it I'm out. Going to see if you're into romantic comedies. Oh, you know, for some oh, of those guys, a you know, it's a, it's a straight up rom com. It, it it plays with the rom com for me a little bit, um, but mm. there's it, it, it's it's a lovely romantic comedy, man. Mm. You know, I, I I told I told Patrick I wanted to really see the new Lars von Trier movie, The House That Jack Built. I don't think that rom coms are really for me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. So I will say that if it's yeah. not you're not into romantic, you may not dig it. But it's a, it's a beautifully shot, beautifully written, and it's a lovely film. So. Check that out, and uh, if you want to not just be in the theaters and playing games, what other events we have for us geeks out there? All right, the <laughs> events that are going on is Monster Mania Con, August 17th through the 19th. The Boogeymen are heading back to New Jersey soon for the 40th edition of Monster Mania Con. I, I didn't know they left New Jersey. Oh, uh, they, they have a, yeah, Ooh. they do Monster Mania in Maryland, and they also do it in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. You You're not a big monster fan? You completely no, missed dude, it. dude. It's Jersey. New Jersey. They, they didn't leave. I feel like the boogeyman. I, I, I just got oh. it. I mean, Jersey's death. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's okay, yeah. Sorry, Jersey. I thought I was like, you don't know that they do this show? <laughs> oh, Are y'all horror fans? Have y'all ever been to a Monster Mania? Did, did you ever go to the one in Maryland? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Dude, I gotta take you guys. That, yeah. It's a great show. I'm a big horror fan. Mm. So, you get to. I got to meet Robert England at the. At the one the year oh, before last, I heard he's like the nicest great guy. guy, great yeah, guy, I heard he's the nicest guy. Uh, I I met a uh, one of the Jasons there. I, I forgot. Kane the, Hodder. Kane Hodder. Kane yeah. Hotter, great guy as well. He's always at every convention. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, get to meet some of your favorite horror character uh, actors there. Uh, yes. Evil Dead guy. I met fucking Ash, uh, Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell was there oh. at that same uh, one. Yeah. Dude, dude, you sold me England. Yeah. Because, uh, we got to do Monster Mania, people. Great show. Uh, it's in New Jersey. Yeah. Okay, uh, I gotta move on from that now. <laughs> um, Power Morphin Con, calling all Anaheim residents, it's Morphin time. So Power so, Rangers Con? Yep, it is a Power Rangers Con. <laughs> Go I, see uh, Jason David Frank. <laughs> J Jason is at every convention. And I've met Jason, he's so a nice awesome guy. Saying, he's bloodshot in the Ninjak vs. The Bounty Universe series. We need to do a review of that at some point. We should. We should, at we some should. point. Yeah. yeah. All right, on to-do list. Yeah. What else we got? <clears throat> Terrific Con. One of Connecticut's biggest pop culture events of the summer is just around the corner. Terrific Con being held basically the same. This, uh, yeah, everything's all, this yeah, weekend. All this, this, all this weekend. All this weekend. So, yep. Uh, you have at the and then Yeah, it's, it's all cut off. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, Terrific Con. Look uh, it up online. Yep. <laughs> Flame Con. Flame Con will be returning to Sheraton, New York, Times Square Hotel in NYC for its fourth year. And are you guys familiar with Flame Con? Nope. nope. All right. Flame Con is the big LGBTQIA con. Okay. Uh, oh. I love the organizers. They've invited us out, actually, the past, since the, they started the show. Mm. Uh, it's probably one of the best uh, LGBT... Well, just... Con, it's a great con in general. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but it highlights... Uh, the creators that are LGBTQIA, the characters that are LGBT. It's a great show, and it's a great community. If you've never been, I strongly suggest checking that out. 
they, they really put on a great show. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's this weekend. Yep. Oh, we got one more thing, Marianne. Uh, oh. Marianne, this is... Marianne, what, what else do we have going on this weekend? For the locals in the area, the Arlington County Fair is this weekend. Oh, yeah! Oh. yeah so, yeah. from the 15th through the 19th, um, great entertainment for the family. Just wanted to throw that out there. There you go. There you go. We actually thought about, I saw mm -hmm. that it was coming this past weekend. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fairs coming out soon. Actually, yeah. it's, it's the year of fairs now. Well, it's, county it's fairs. It's the season of fairs, yeah. 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 Not the year. County's mm -hmm. already yes. yes. The time of... It's the time of the year. Oh, I forgot. There's one more convention that just, I just remember this. Um, anybody know here know real Peter Griffin? Yes! Uh, Robert yes! There's another convention that he is sponsoring called Another Freaking Con in New I York. I saw that. Yes, it's happening this weekend. My friend Mandy will be there with oh, Robert. Okay. I believe it's this weekend. Somebody can verify that for me, please? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I believe. Verify that for me for on, on the Twitters. When I edit um, this, I'll put it right here. Yeah. It's in front of us. Yeah, so but that's, shout out to Robert. Yeah, Robert's, yeah. Robert's a sponsor of that convention. Um, I... I've met him, I think, once in passing. I know his friend Mandy more than that. Yeah, I, yeah, I've met him a few times. He's an amazing Peter Griffin. Oh, gosh. Hilarious. I'm sure yeah. you've seen the stuff on YouTube with him. And my friend Mandy but he... is his is his Lois. Oh, okay. And, and all I haven't his... seen her. She's always around. I haven't seen that. Okay. Yeah, she's always around. Um, Robert, also, because I'm part of The Finest, which is the G.I. G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> the G.I. Joe. Why is that not a thing? A G.I. Joe. I know, right? That should be a thing. The G.I. Jews. Yeah, I'm a, a, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I am a part of the GI Joe costuming <laughs> club of cosplayers, and uh, Robert is our one of our Sergeant Slaughters. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah and he's right. awesome as that. So uh, shout out to Robert. Check out that con. Yeah. Uh, anything else we got going on? Anything happening at Painted Vision Comics Cards and Games, Adam Martin? Besides no. the great deals that they can get in this. We're store? still recovering from Otakon. Leave us alone. But come give us your money. <laughs> you don't want them to come in the store and buy out some stuff. You we'll take the money. In. Just leave us alone. Okay. <laughs> come in. Just buy, leave. but don't talk to them. Just, leave your, just leave your money on the countertop. Take what you want and leave. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Approved. There you go. Okay. All right, guys. Not quite accurate cosplay. Tell them how they can track you online and all, all that. All right. You can find us on Facebook and on, and on Instagram at Not Quite Accurate Cosplay. And also, you can find me at, with Wordbox with two X's <laughs> on Instagram. And mine's uh, Bizarre. Uh, bizarre. <laughs> you can try to figure out how that's spelled. And, it's uh, on the screen. As I've yeah. said before, don't find me on Facebook. I will insult you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. It's okay. All right, Jesse, Hardcore Bloodshot. Tell him what's up. Uh, just find me on Instagram, Jesse Fresco. That's just my handle. Um, eventually, I'll move away from Facebook. Eventually, yeah. Still, we're, I'm working on it. It's because of Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. yeah. But the problem is that there's so many people that I talk to on Facebook that aren't on Instagram. That's so it's true. like, I want to talk to Josh Dysart, but he doesn't use his Instagram account, which is weird. Yeah. He right. has one, but he never uses the damn thing. So it's like... It, you can never get away, man. Uh, it's hard to get away. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, since Marianne wants to be part of people or not me, give her a shout out. I'm still going to give her a shout out. Love you, Marianne. Thank you for all you do. Uh, shout out to Lauren Grant, who also came through with, with Quirktastic. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys, but New Orleans Wednesday is going to be doing a lot more with Quirktastic. Mm -hmm. So they will be uh, with us, along with the Nerds of Color, Hard Knock Life. Shout out to Keith Chow uh, with the Nerds of Color, who we are all already a member of. Um, I am Patrick, uh, patrickstrange.com, at Strange since 1977, at Temple Far East. Make sure you tell us in the comments what you feel about the show. We're trying to do a lot of stuff with it. I, I can't thank these guys enough for coming in every week to give us this pop culture news and just to have a good time and hang out with each other. Yeah, man. Um, so, uh, at New Release Wednesday, at the NRW. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. We're out of here. <laughs>